Well, let's focus on our posture. So if you can find some wall space anywhere, and the challenge is trying to get your bum, your shoulders, your shoulder blades against the door or a wall, whatever you can. Now I know that the head can be challenging, right? The, the back of our head. Sometimes when we try to get the back of our head on the wall, we tend to tilt the chin up. And you don't want to do that. You want to try to keep your chin level and look straight ahead. And then from there, do the best you can to get your head back. And if it doesn't touch, it doesn't touch. But more importantly, the glutes, shoulder blades, bring those shoulders back. And if you can, start to get the heels a little closer to the bottom or the base of the floor. So heels, glutes, and then the shoulder blades. And then the very last thing would be the head. And then pull in the stomach. So you're bringing it all, all together, focusing in on the core, tightening up the stomach, keeping the shoulders back, glutes against the wall, heels against the wall, and the tummy nice and tight. Flex the core as much as you can. You really want to just tighten up the stomach, flex, remember to breathe. So you're pulling in the core, you're tightening up the belly, you're bringing the belly button in towards your lower back or towards your spine. And just keep your posture tall. Now from there, nice and easy, walk forward like a zombie, real slow. And then go backwards, but be very careful going backwards. You wanna go slower back then you do go forward, right? So you want to go at a slower pace, moving backwards. You can go forward fairly quickly, but with good form and good posture, right? And keep that tummy nice and tight. And then as you go backwards, continue to flex the stomach, go slow on the way back, right? You're definitely going back at a slower pace than you are moving forward. Once you come back to the wall, of course, pay attention, be mindful of your surroundings, right? Be, be aware. Um, and, and be careful not to hit the wall too hard with your body. Try to, try to be mindful. It's called proprioception, being aware of your body mechanics in space. You're being aware of your body in space, your movement within the space that we're working in, in our environment, our workout environment. So you really want to be aware of your surroundings at all times. Flex the stomach, right? We, Want to make sure that we don't have any tripping hazards nearby, right? Your home should be trip free, hopefully. One more time, shoulders back, strong core, re-engage everything, get that good posture alignment, and then walk forward. Nice and easy, going backwards. All right, make your way to the chair. Try to keep that good posture in a seated position now. So same thing. So think of your uh, top half getting into a good tall posture. Imagine you're against the wall still. Shoulders are back, right? Your, your bum is, is obviously sitting in the chair, but the back end of your pelvis Imagine that against the wall. So you're, you're the back end of your hips, shoulder blades, real tall, pull in the stomach, right? And this is the good posture you want to maintain. From right here, tighten up the stomach, keep it real, real tight. Let's get the arms out to the sides. So maintain that good, tall, vertical posture Start with some small little arm circles. Now I have my hands right around shoulder height. If that's too tall or too high up, go a little lower. Nothing wrong with going a little lower. More importantly is the movement. Continue to move, continue to draw a circle with your arms moving at the same time. Now change directions, whatever direction you were doing, reverse it. Now remember your posture, get that posture nice and tall. 
flex the stomach. Reverse the movement again. So now you're going back to the original direction you began with. Flex the core, right? Sit real tall. You should start to feel those shoulders, the top of your arms, the upper arm, really working and burning. Change directions. Sitting tall, pulling the stomach. Should really start to feel those shoulders. Now go a little faster, a little quicker. Faster arms, again, the height of your hands and arms doesn't really matter. I just want you to keep moving and keep focusing on your posture. Strong core, sit tall and relax. Shake out those arms. You should have really felt it in the, the deltoids, the top of the arms. So from here, we're gonna, I'm gonna play with you a little bit. I'm gonna do it too. Sitting tall, one arm out. Pick a direction. So I am gonna start off moving to the front and back. I'm actually going clockwise. So I'm moving clockwise here, right? Now get the other arm out and hold it still. Don't move it, just hold it. So one arm is completely still. The other arm is moving and I'm just moving it clockwise. Hold, so we're doing two different things with the left and right side, one arm is moving, the other arm is not. You're still drawing a circle and you are still sitting tall. Now hold, the arm that was moving is now still. The arm that is still will begin to move and start moving. So the arm that's extended out, again, I have it at shoulder height. My arm is parallel to the floor, but if that's too much for your arm, just bring it down. Not a big deal. You can lower your arms and still hold the position. All right, so you can still make it work for your body. Strong, tall posture. Pause, hold it there, other arm. Now from here, actually, let's go counterclockwise. I didn't give you a direction on the last one, but I'll give you the clockwise. I was doing counterclockwise on the other arm, but I guess it doesn't really matter. We're just, the main focus is working the left and the right half of our body. One arm is doing one thing, the other arm is doing something different. So it's all part of body control working the left and right part of our brain, having to think a little bit. All right, hold it, now move the other arm. I'm gonna actually go clockwise. I did counterclockwise on the other one. And if you can't quite remember which direction, it's all good, don't worry, just keep moving, keep working. So one arm is holding, the other arm is moving, and then remember the posture, suck in the stomach. So you got a lot of mechanics and things that you need to worry about and focus on. All right, your core, one arm staying still, the other arm moving. All right, relax, shake out those arms again. All right, standing tall, move out the arms, hold, start to bring in your feet a little closer together. Whatever height you want to do with your arms is fine. Sitting real tall, get real, real tall through your posture. One foot out, right back in. Other foot out, right back in. So it really doesn't matter how high up you pick the foot off the ground. You just want to, ex all I care about is extension. Extend your leg forward to the front. That's it. Now we're not even moving our arms but you are working your upper half, right? Remember your core. And now we're working the lower half. Again, just working on coordination, right? Upper body's working, holding a position, the lower body's working, and we are going back and forth between the left and right side on the legs. So you're working the left and right side of your body, the upper and lower part of your body. Again, you have to think. Right, which is good, it's good. We wanna be able to 
think and be able to control multiple muscle groups at the same time. And nice and easy, relax. Shake out those arms. All right, grab a dumbbell. Let's move on. Grab a dumbbell, just one. I'm gonna turn sideways to give you a little better view. We're gonna work on our core rotations so your legs are extended out. These are great for you pickleballers out there. And then just in general, this is great for turning and twisting your body and whatever daily activity you're doing or daily movement. So sitting as tall as you can to begin with. Legs are extended out in front of you, heels are down. Don't sit too close to the edge of the chair, all right? So make sure you have some room, all right? Don't, don't fall out of your chair. Start to lean back a little bit. Raise those elbows out to the side. Now from here, we're gonna twist and turn to one side. I am keeping the weight close to my chest the entire time. I am also leaning back towards the backrest of my chair. Right, if this is too much on your lower back and you feel it bothering you, sit a little taller. Don't lean back as far, right? So just sit taller and you can still use your core to help you turn and twist. So your abs are really helping out <clears throat> to manipulate your body, to rotate and turn your torso, your upper body. And so Great core rotation. Now the, the added benefit to this is you get a little stretch in your lower back, your lower lumbar, your erector spinae, a little bit of your obliques, obliques to the, the side ab muscle, also known as the love handles. Those are the same muscles that are actually working. And so you feel one side work and contract while the other side is stretching and lengthening which is great right and you don't want to over stretch or overdo it you're just moving within your own body's flexibility and range of motion and so continue to lean back continue to suck in that belly button let's go for 10 more there's 10 9 Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Take a little break. Put the weight down and let's stand up. Let's get ready for some squats. We're not gonna do a lot, don't worry. I just want your legs to get ready because we're gonna focus on some balancing. So let's just practice some squats, sitting in our chair. I'm gonna give you a little side view, right? Stand in front of your chair. Your heels are fairly close to the legs of your chair. And from there, you're gonna push your hips down and back. Get your bum to touch the chair and then come all the way up. If that's too far down or too low, then just pretend like you have a high chair and then you're going to sit in a high chair and you're just pushing your hips back, feeling the weight on your heels. And so maybe you're doing half a squat, whatever works for your body, right? Even if it's just a little bit of a squat, doesn't matter. Get the motion right. The mechanics are hips back like you're going to sit down, right? So you always want to drive those hips back. And again, if you can come all the way down, touch, and stand all the way up, that is the goal. Do what you can. See what works for you. Let's do five more. Again, it's just a quick little set just to warm up the body. Three more. Two more. Last one coming up. All right, stay standing. Now that those legs are fairly warmed up, let's work on our balance. 
So before we do any kind of single leg bounce, we're gonna do something a little different. We used to do these in our class together. So maybe you wanna to get to an area where you feel really safe and stable. If that means that you need to be behind your chair just in case, be behind your chair. We're just gonna stand tall. I'm not gonna use anything, but you set yourself up however you need to. We're gonna stand tall and we're gonna close our eyes. So, but don't close them yet. So what's gonna happen, as soon as you close your eyes, you're gonna feel your body kind of shift and move around on you. You're not gonna have any type of proprioception, any type of spatial awareness because your eyes will be closed, you can't see anything. So that really does a number to your balance. So close your eyes for three to maybe five seconds, open them, re-engage your core and your posture, get your body right, and then try to close your eyes again. So first things first, imagine we're against the wall, right? Shoulders back, tummy tight, hips a little back, a little bend in your knees. From right here, close your eyes. And see how long you can keep them closed for without, you know, moving and swaying everywhere. And you should start to feel, as soon as your eyes close, you should start to kind of feel like the body's shifting a little, moving around a little. You should really feel like your feet and toes, ankles, your calves maybe are working and shifting and stabilizing. Totally fine. So I feel a little movement in this one. I tend to kind of feel a little shift towards my left foot, towards my left toes. I kind of feel like I'm going a little forward towards my left pinky toe, but I'm trying to correct that. So you correct it, open your eyes as needed, right? Be aware of whatever you need to grab onto if you're losing your balance, right? So you wait, open up your eyes and then grab whatever you need, hold on, regain your balance, close your eyes again. Keep the posture tall, tight, tight tummy. And be careful. Nice and easy, open up, moving up. So that should be helpful somewhat if you are walking at night in the dark, right? Being aware somewhat, even though your eyes are open and you can kind of see, you wanna kind of be aware of where you're moving at night in the dark. So, kind of helps you there with balance, right? Because obviously with our eyes closed, it's completely dark, we can't see anything. Single leg balance now. We're not gonna close our eyes for this one. We're just gonna focus on one leg balancing. All right, you can hold on to a chair with one hand or two. Totally up to you, or no hands. The key, the standing leg, the knee is bent. All right, bend that knee. The standing leg, the knee is a little bent. Try not to lock it out. Try not to lock out the knee. Um, because, you know, if you, your body's gonna move and shift as you're balancing on one leg. So if the knee is completely locked and in a fixed, locked out joint position, sometimes as you lose your balance, you could tweak and twist your body in a way where you may injure your knee joint. So just make sure that that standing leg, the knee is bent and the weight is on the heel of the, of the grounded foot. And let's switch sides. So balance first, a little bend in the knee, right? Feel the weight on the heel of the grounded foot, tight tummy, working on the balance. Stay strong through your core. It helps to have something to stare at, like a focal point. Um, so if you have something that you can stare at, look at that and just concentrate on that spot. And do what you can. Remember, bend the knee. Don't lock out the knee. And bend that leg. Feel the weight on the heel. Keep your tummy nice and tight. Continue to hold. 
Okay, so pick the side that gave you the most trouble. For me, it was my left. So I'm gonna focus on my left leg. So we're gonna do another set, but we are gonna focus on the weaker or less dominant side, whatever that is. Everyone's different. For me, it's left. It might be your right leg. If you feel like you're pretty well balanced, then hold this position for maybe 10 more seconds and then switch sides. Hold that for about 10 seconds and then switch sides and you go back and forth. And that's if you felt pretty well balanced on both legs. Uh, but for me, my left, it's, it's always been more challenging than my right. And so continue to work on that. Remember a little bend on the standing knee. Feel the weight on the heel of that grounded foot. Core engaged, shoulders back. Use your arms as needed. Grab the chair if you need it. Totally up to you. Whatever works. And stop. Okay. Moving on. We're going to work on some agility. So this has a lot of applications. Walking, pickleball, dancing. Or just regular movement. So, you're going to get your feet almost as, as wide as you would for a squat. And so from here, your arms are kind of relaxed, but they're bent, right? They're not, you're, they're not super tense. Just kind of loosen the arms. I'm just going to step back with my right leg, right foot. Just a little turn back, and then I come forward. Left leg, a little shift and turn. As I come back, my toe points out to the side a little bit, and then I come forward and then my toes are pointing to the front. And now the other leg, a little shift backwards. So you can notice one foot stays behind while the other foot moves. And so we're just going back and forth in our athletic, always coming back to the athletic stance, right? We always wanna be in our good athletic stance, ready for anything. And it's almost like a little bit of a squat, kind of, like the beginning uh, position of a squat or the initial type of descent coming down from a squat. So you always want to have good, strong legs, bent legs, and you just continue to step and turn, turn the hips a little. So I'm going to keep my hands on my hips and my elbows pointing out to the side so you can see how much my hips turn. And now you can see my hands are right on my elbows determine the side pointing position of the, the hips or the plane of motion. And so you can see how much my hips really turn. And this is where you want to focus on your core. Use your core. Tighten it up now. Flex your stomach. And if you want to keep your hands on your waist and point your elbows out to the side to maybe give you a better frame of reference on how much your hips are turning, feel free to do so. Totally up to you, doesn't matter. You can even have your arms out to the side and you can see how much my hips open up as I go back. All right, moving on. Done with that. From right here, again, we still have our strong athletic stance. We're going to go out to the side, to the middle. Other side, to the middle. Side step to the middle, other side step to the middle. So we're just going lateral steps, right? Always coming back to our strong athletic position. Whatever you want to do with your arms is fine. I was just having them right in front of my chest. Whatever feels good for you. Now notice when I come back, I don't bring my feet completely together. I have some space. And I'm in my strong and stable athletic stance. Just a few more. All right, come back to center, start jogging in place. 
So our heels are up. Get those heels off the ground. Toes, balls of the foot, or feet. Balls of the feet, only thing touching the ground. Keep those heels up, and you're just jogging in place, bending those knees, bringing those knees forward. And it's not a very big lift of the foot off the ground. It's an inch or so. Just, just break the contact from the floor with your shoes or your feet. Right? So just get a good lift, and you're just marching. Whatever you want to do with your arms, start to pick up the pace a little bit. Start to move around. Have a little fun with it. Go in some different directions. Move. Move. Keep jogging in place and staying on the toes. Now start to go to the side. You're moving just laterally. Just laterally left, laterally to the right. Continually chopping your feet or jogging in place as you're moving. Right? Now go to the front, jogging in place. And then go to the back. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be careful. Don't go back too far where you hit the wall. Right? Be careful. So we're just jogging, going forward, jogging. Light, light toe taps, moving forward. Not really jogging in place, we're just jogging with the toe taps and now we're moving to the front and to the back. Keep those legs and feet moving and chopping. Let's do a little circle now. You're just moving in a little circle fashion around your room if you can. Stay off the heels. Stay off the heels. Now change direction. If you were going in a circle, go in the other direction. All right, we're just working on movement. We're just staying off our heels. Our calves are really working. Your feet are really working. Ankles, a lot of ankle stability. Your ankles, your feet, your calves are major role players in everything that you do when you walk or dance or play pickleball. Jogging in place. Even standing in the kitchen, making coffee, making dinner. Your feet are always working. Your ankles are always working. So we need to keep those ankles strong, calves strong, and stop. Last thing we do, use your chair or maybe a, a wall space or maybe a tall shelf. We're just doing calf raises. Heels lift as high as you can. Good, tall posture. Right, so try to keep your posture as tall as you can. Pull in the stomach. And you are trying to lift your heels up as high as you can. Try to feel the weight go inward towards the big toe. All right, so the, you're shifting all the weight, your body weight, towards the balls of your feet, the big, the big toe. And then there's that big ball right next to that big toe. That's where you want to get all that pressure going inward. And as you shift your weight inward towards the big toe, you're also trying to lift your heels up as high as you can. And you should start to feel the back of your lower leg, the calf muscle. And now we're just focusing on strength for your calf, which is the major role player, one of the major role players in uh, Agility, ankle stability. Let's do 20 more and then we are done. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right.
let's stretch out our calves. You can do, I would recommend you do this stretch every day if you can. You can have your hands on your chair, one leg forward, one leg goes straight back, and that back leg is completely straight, front leg is bent. Now, my back foot is pointing straight ahead, but notice the heel. The heel is going down towards the floor, and the back leg is straight. That's going to give you a good stretch in your lower leg, the calf. And if you have your hands on a wall or a chair, it actually gives you a little bit of, a, of some leverage. It helps you try to drive that heel down to the ground. So it does help to have your hands on an object or a piece of furniture. Switch legs. Front leg is bent, back leg straight. Use your arms and hands for a little leverage to drive that back heel down to the floor. And remember that back foot is pointing straight ahead to the front. Try not to have that back foot, the toes pointing to the side. You want those toes pointing forward. That's the key. Otherwise you won't really feel the stretch. And you're just holding. This is a great stretch to do every day. We walk every day, we move every day. So your calves are working all day, every day. Your feet are always working. So it's good to stretch them out, get them a little loose. And we are all done, guys and girls. Bravo. Great work. Good job. Thanks for joining today.